Apola is that it is a volunteer led and volunteer run organization. So as you can see here, we have a very robust board of directors. Uh, most of them are physicians. Some of them are healthcare professionals like me, other are uh, international graduates uh, and uh, researchers. Uh, we have lawyer, we have a finance person and uh, a good in social services, uh, behavioral health and a good representation of healthcare professionals. Um, we all have in common that we are close by or, or uh, live in uh, Chicago and the surrounding areas. But again, the scope of our organization goes beyond Chicago. Um, so that's the, the, our board of directors uh, that you can see there. We have structured MOLA um, a, a, with five programs that are actually six programs now, but these uh, five programs are the main programs. Uh, so we have a volunteer-based board of directors that uh, has a proxy to uh, manage the organization that is an executive committee. I'm the vice president of the organization and a member of the executive committee. Our president is uh, Dr. Joaquin Estrada, who's a colorectal surgeon in Chicago, trained at Cook County and uh, also trained in California. Uh, our vice president, it's me, and then we have a former or, or better immediate past president uh, that ran the organization for three years. Her name is Pilar Ortega and she's an emergency medicine physician. We have pediatricians, geriatricians, researchers. Uh, and uh, so the, this is a picture of one of our events. Um, and I was telling you about the structure of the organization. So those five uh, um, committees that Isa was showing us, could you go back to the five committees? So we have in the five committees, uh, these are the most important committees and also each committee runs a program. So we have the education and research program, the mentorship program. Those are the two most important in terms of the level of activities and engagement. Uh, we have a public health and an advocacy program. We have a wellness program and we have an international graduates uh, chapter or, or branch and we have a medical student branch. So those are the programs. The, the preceptorship is a wonderful opportunity for anyone interested in doing any of the, of the following. Uh, as a non-for-profit organization and a volunteer based and run organization, we uh, do everything. Uh, as volunteers, we rely on our interns uh, and we will have four in the next uh, uh, year. Uh, our interns support the logistical coordinated and um, in some cases lead the work and the projects related to each one of those programs. Uh, so right now we have two open positions. Uh, one in terms of the type of position, one of them is one and the other one uh, is uh, uh, two um, interns, internships. So we're talking about three internships. Uh, one is for communications. It would be ideal for someone that is interested in uh, uh, relate, uh, the work related to social media, our website, our uh, media presence, um, and our um, newsletter and communications that is pretty active. And then the other two are related to the, the rest of the programming. Um, the most important activity that we organize every year is the symposium. So we have the opportunity or the interns will have the opportunity to learn about uh, non-for-profit management, leadership, uh, education and research, and the work of the other committees that I mentioned, public health, that we do education and empower, empowerment of uh, Latinx patients and uh, providing educational opportunities to our members in terms of uh, adding value to their career advancement through the different things that we coordinate and organize. Among them is also uh, working uh, on networking, uh, facilitating opportunities for physicians to interact with each other, for uh, healthcare professionals to interact with each other uh, and create a community that is supportive uh, and uh, that enhances the opportunities for all of us. Mm, I think in a nutshell, that's what describes MOLA. 
It's a wonderful organization. The enthusiasm, most of our membership base, oh, I should say we have about 900 members. Most of our membership base is physicians and healthcare professionals in formative stages of their career. A lot of them are students. We have also a scholarship program uh, of which I would say there is a great opportunity for interns to be beneficiaries of that as well. Uh, the scholarship program distributes uh, this year more than $70,000 in scholarships. Um, and then we have the education and research projects that would give you the opportunity to work on different things related to research. Um, so as you can see, it's a, it's a lot. Uh, and I'm gonna leave uh, Isa and Jose, Jose Alberto, and I think Jennifer is here too, to tell you more about their own experience as former or current uh, interns. And then we take questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Oscar, for that wonderful introduction regarding MOLA and even just introducing yourself. As interns, we work really closely with Oscar. He's kind of like our supervisor um, and he's great. He's great at giving feedback. We have weekly check-ins with him in terms of what other committees need or where we are, are where we are um, in like the projects that we are working on. So very supportive. Um, Jose, Jennifer, either of you want to start and take it away, maybe introduce yourselves, pronouns, and let's do two things, like what brought you to MOLA in the first place, and what you took away from your year-long internship with us. I can go ahead and start. Um, hey, everybody, my name is Jose, Jose Alberto, um, call me whatever you want. Um, uh, he, his uh, pronouns, I uh, am a 2020 uh, graduate from Washington University in St. Louis. I'm originally from Puerto Rico. Um, I lived there for 12 years. Um, and then when I was 12, I moved to uh, Dayton, Ohio. And last year, my parents moved to uh, Chicago. And because of uh, COVID and all that uncertainty, I was also applying to medical school this uh, year. Um, I decided to stay with my parents. So I'm in Chicago and I will be in Chicago for uh, the next four years for medical school. So um, I'm very excited about that. Um, yeah. So when I was looking for work um, and things to do during my gap year, um, I was also studying for the MCAT, which was a little stressful and made the search a little stressful. And um, one of my friends actually um, that's at uh, University of Chicago Medical School, who's also uh, uh, the medical student um, co-chair, um, Itzel. Um, she said, hey, look, they MOLA, this is a great organization, um, very in line to what you, uh, um, uh, what, what you view, what the practice of medicine um, should be like, um, which is focused on the community advocating for uh, people um, that are like you and, and, and need a voice. And so she was like, you should try this. Um, and that's what I did. And luckily there was a spot open and I was super excited. Um, so that's how I found the, uh, the, the, the job. Um, more specifically on my roles. So like Oscar Ivan was saying, MOLA has a lot of committees that have their own focuses. Obviously they work um, it, it, together sometimes like the work overlaps and like the projects and events um but as an intern you are tasked to support specific um committees so i was supporting the education and research um which is houses the scholarship program and the um um symposium and the uh finance committee um uh the, the medical student committee um and then development committee which has to do with like grant writing and uh, and things like that um so one of the beauties of this uh, role um, is kind of what Oscar Ivan was talking about. Um, it's a nonprofit, it's a volunteer organization. A lot of people that chair the committee are incredible people um, that are physicians, uh, healthcare professionals, um, people that you really learn from. And, and it's kind of eye-opening to me. That, that's one of the things like, well, wow, these people have the same interest, same idea of how they want to view, how they envision practicing medicine. It doesn't just limit yourself to a hospital and, and treating patients. You go outside in the community as well. Um, that's something that I've always like been interested in. So seeing people like that, that practice it, they embody it, and they're already like, you know, at a high level uh, doing it, it was inspiring to me. Um, and I, learning how to do that, how to conduct myself, you know, um, 
but anyways, it's a volunteer organization. So the interns are the ones that are doing a lot of like the full-time part-time like stuff, like the planning, the, the initiatives, the projects, you have the power to kind of say, Hey, look, we should do this event. Um, or we should like coordinate something like that. You create a proposal and then you run it and you have like these professionals supporting you um, it, it running that. Um, so that, that that's like one of, one of the things that I wanted to mention. Um, and then the other thing is like, it's, it's really cool to see how a nonprofit works and being so um, um, involved with it and like the little details. I was doing finance, like I would never see myself doing like any math or like treasure for like anything. Um, but then again, I didn't have any experience doing that. And back to the support system that, that, that Mola gave me, Oscar Ivan and I met constantly trying to develop a strategic plan for the year, um, the budget, um, how to like to turn in forms that are very important to like keep track of what, what, when you're running a nonprofit. And we were meeting for like hours and hours and he was teaching me all that because obviously he's an expert at it. Um, and I, now I can say like, I can, I have a good idea of how that, that, that whole thing works. Um, so if you're a person that's interested in um, community health, um, things that go beyond just the hospital, if you're interested in going to medicine um, or if you just want to have an impact with to the Latino community and that's something that you're very passionate about, I, I think it's a really, really good um, challenging um, uh, um, opportunity. Um, I'll leave it at that. Sorry, I went on a rant there. Uh, I can answer questions later if that's needed. <laughs> Yes, that was amazing. Thank you so much, Jose, and never yeah. apologize for a great <laughs> Um, Jennifer or Karina, welcome. Do you, either of you can, can go? Karina is one of our intern alumni and Jennifer is one of our current interns. And Karina, just to catch you up, we're just introducing ourselves, our pronouns, um, kind of like your role within MOLA as intern and what brought you to the organization slash like your experience. Yeah, I can go about Karina still getting ready. Um, but hi, everyone. My name is Jennifer. I go by um, she, her. Uh, so I, I, I just recently graduated with my Master of Public Health from Loyola. So uh, doing this internship for me, <laughs> thank you, Oscar. So doing this internship for me was very much like the practice. So you go to school and you sort of learn like the book stuff. You're like, okay, this is what you do. But when you work, when you intern for MOLA, so I do the public health and the advocacy committee. So a lot of the stuff we do is, okay, develop a project or develop a program. And you actually get to practice those skills that you might've learned in class or as Jose said, that the you have guides. They'll say, okay, this is how you go about it. Here's step by step. And if you need help, just call me, let me know. They're always really good with communication. That's really great. Um, other things about me. So I am um, Mexican. I was born in the US, but both of my parents are from Mexico. Um, I also did my undergrad in Loyola. And so as an intern, so I originally I heard of Mola from one of a different member. So she's a doctor. She's a primary care doctor, Dr. Olivo. And she mentioned it because she's my mom's doctor. And I originally joined Mola as just a member. So I would go, I was lucky enough to go to their symposium back in 2019. And they did this event where we were all seated in this like massive, like, uh, like auditorium. And one of the speakers said, okay, everybody who is like either in the profession or studying to be like in healthcare, stand up. And then they said, stay up if you're Latino. And like you turn around, cause I was like in the front row. So I like turn around and there was like this massive wave of like Latino healthcare providers. And never in my life had I seen that. It's always like one or two, like maybe now and then you'll see a person. But when I saw that, that, that like, you know, made me emotional. I was like, oh my God, this, this is this is something that I wanna be part of. And while I was a member, I heard about the internship program. So I applied because I was like, this, this is something that I wanna do. And as Jose said, like you get to do so many things, you get like to experience so many things. 
And now that everything's opening back up, we can definitely now start doing more in-person type events. A lot of the stuff was over Zoom, but either even then we had really, really good turnouts in certain events. So I know public health, we did a LGBTQ event back in June. And then we had the Mola Sevacuna event this past January. So you're always like doing stuff. So if it's something that you're interested in, like maybe you're thinking about medical school or some sort of like uh, health program, like maybe public health or something along those lines, I would definitely recommend this if it's something you would really like to do. Um, that was beautiful, Jennifer. I'll just take on from there. Um, hi everyone, my name is Karina or Karina. Um, my pronouns are she, ella. Um, how did I get into MOLA? So I graduated from UIC in 2018, so it's been a while now, but I had close connections with the Hispanic Center of Excellence there. Um, my advisor there was um, Alicia Rodriguez, and then it was Paulina Guzman. And I was talking to Paulina because I was in my gap years and I was working in research at Northwestern and, you know, research was fun, but I kind of felt lost there I was like man like when I was in undergrad I was surrounded by you know all these Latino pre-meds I felt so supported and like I was missing that so much in that period in my life when I was working in, in research as a coordinator and I told Paulina how I was feeling and she was like you know what have you heard about MOLA and I was like no no I don't <laughs> I don't know about MOLA and so I applied and it was the most unexpected blessing that I had come into my life. Um, I thankfully was accepted to be an intern. And when I became an intern, I think it was just me at first. And then eventually, you know, my uh, my colleague David came in to help me. And then later on, I met Isa, Jose, Jennifer. It was, it was really nice with the guidance of Oscar and the other leadership there. Um, my primary role, I'd say, was coordinating the symposium. Um, I think it was the third one. There was the third one. It was a great turnout, and it was a really good experience for me. Um, it was what I took out from my, from my experience with MOLA was, I think I would consider myself someone who is shy. Um, like before joining this meeting, like I felt my heart pitter patter a lot because <laughs> I hadn't, you know, been in like these types of meetings for a while now where I have to speak. Um, and I felt myself just feel much more comfortable with um, like public speaking, um, delegating tasks to people, coordinating events. Um, mind you, the symposium for the, the third one that um, I helped coordinate it was over 250 attendees, you know, so that was um, very important to me that I was able to see that happen successfully. It was it was great. I would have never thought that I would have been able to do that. Um, and so I, I grew, I think, as a leader. And then I, I also developed relationships with a lot of the people that you see here and a lot of people that you don't see here, a lot of the physicians. Um, some of them have gone on to now recommend me for, you know, programs, scholarships. Um, and not only that, but, you know, um, I haven't, um, what's it called, I guess, done this yet, by, but I know it's available to, available to me. Like I could ask those people like, hey, I'm really interested in your specialty. Can I shadow you? So it just really opened so many doors for me. Um, and I think I, I grew a lot. Um, something that I've mentioned to Oscar so much is that for me, like I was feeling, it was my gap years. I was feeling like, man, can I really do this? Um, <laughs> like be going into medicine. And, and then like similar to what Jennifer said, I was sitting in these rooms with, you know, all of these Latinos, women, men, um, you know, people who are, you know, non-binary, binary, um, like it was just so beautiful to see like gender diversity, all these other ethnicities, like it was just so like, dang, like I can do this. Like, you know, I just felt so supported and that representation I saw was like, yeah, I, I can do this. Um, and, um, and so where I'm at now is um, I'm just gearing up to apply. A lot of my mentors that I've made in MOLA um, have helped me and are still helping me through this process. Um, 
and yeah, I'd say, you know, if you are on the fence about applying, I think you really, you really should do it. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much, everyone. That was all wonderful introduction. Thank you again for being here. And yeah, we'll just open the floor up now or the chat for any questions that anyone has um, to, our, to any of our specific interns or just like general questions about the program or for Oscar in terms of like more about MOLA, but just a quick little introduction about myself as an intern. Uh, I agree with what everyone else has said. I graduated from Chicago in 2019 and I decided to take some time off before medical school and I loved, you know, the people who I met at MOLA, what I was able to do through the organization. It's Oscar and I kind of call it like our creative spaces and leadership camp because I'm someone who just needs to be like very involved and actively doing something. And through MOLA, I was just really able to connect with people who were just as passionate as I was and just as excited to, to get out into the community and you know volunteer or spread information in Spanish. And I don't know, just kind of that we're proud of their cultures or similar backgrounds as well. Um, and it was just very inspiring meeting the mentors at MOLA, the mentees, the future generation high schoolers who are part of the organization. So I definitely think that's my favorite part. And it's also a leadership camp. I think, you know, even in college, like I've had different leadership positions, but nothing like this, where you're kind of in charge of, you know, different committees and without our interns, I feel like everything would just kind of fall apart. We're the backbone of the organization. We keep things organized. We keep um, notes on track. We communicate with different committees with the board of directors. So interns are just so important and so essential to the organization. Um, and in addition to that, we, we do get paid. Um, our interns get paid. And I feel like even though it's, you know, not like a huge compensation, but anything helps, especially you know, because of the work that we're doing, we're important and we're important to the organization. And it's just really helpful to know that we're valued by, by MOLA. So if anyone has any questions, feel, please feel free to let us know in the chat. Um, anything specific for interns? I haven't seen any questions. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't seen any questions yet, but I'll just go ahead and ask a question for Oscar. Oscar, how do you think that the communication between interns and through like the preceptorship program works for the benefit of keeping kind of like everything organized and moving. Mm -hmm. So, well, first we, we're 13. So if, if you don't mind and you feel comfortable, uh, I would encourage you to use the, the video camera so we can see you um, and, and you can see us and uh, feel free to ask a question if, if you don't want to do it in the, uh, in the chat, you can do it in person. Um, I see that there is a lot of diversity here, but I believe one of you is from is is residing outside of the United States, which is fine. Um, and uh, we do welcome international graduates. We actually have a, a branch within MOLA for international graduates, um, and not only physicians, but not only aspiring physicians, uh, uh, behavioral health. Uh, any kind of nursing. I hear that one of you, or I read that one of you is supplying for nursing. That's perfect. That's excellent. Um, and uh, so to answer your question, Isa, uh, the, the communication, uh, we meet regularly. The expectation is that the intern would dedicate uh, around 20 hours. Those 20 hours are an average uh, a week uh, to MOLA. And um, during those 20 hours, you will be, a lot of those hours would be on virtual activities or on your own. You don't need an office. You don't need to be presential or, or to be in person uh, in, in our uh, activities. Most of them, uh, currently all of them are virtual, but uh, most of them are gonna continue being virtual. Uh, so virtuality is, is the element. Uh, we, we don't have a space, we don't have an office as such. Uh, but we do meet in the different organizations where we work. Uh, as uh, Isa was mentioning, we did have an agreement with Northwestern University in Chicago, and that's where we uh, had our 
last uh, in-person uh, symposium. Last year was uh, virtual and this year is, is supposed to be a little bit of a mix. So um, the communication is very frequent. We meet weekly on huddles that uh, where we go through all the different uh, assignments and all the things that are pressing. There, is, there needs to be a lot of coordination between the committees and the programs. Um, and uh, interns communicate regularly. Fortunately, we have a lot of tools now. If you ask me 30 years ago when I started working, the, it, that wasn't the case, but now the virtuality it makes possible to coordinate work uh, uh, on your own uh, on your own time at your own pace. So people who are working full time can be mentor. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, part of uh, the preceptorship program as interns. Um, but of course, we the more flexibility, the better for us. But we can adjust uh, a little bit to uh, other plans that you might have because we also understand that you have uh, other activities that you might be committing to, uh, a lot of research, research assistance chips uh, and uh, other types of jobs um, that you can have uh, uh, when, while you do the internship with, with MOLA. The internship is an academic year. We start, we, last year we did a little bit uh, less uh, formal in terms of the time, but it, it's roughly 12 months and uh, 20 hours a week, as Isa mentioned, there is an stipend. It's not a salary. It's not a, an employment relationship. So it's only an stipend uh, that pays for some of the costs that you will have. Uh, uh, but by no means is a salary or or, or or enough to to pay the living in the U.S. Perhaps if you are in Mexico or, or Venezuela or Colombia, you might you might make a full salary out of a, the stipend that we give. Um, and then the, there's a lot of communication and interaction between the, the, the chairs or co-chairs, better to say, of the different committees and the interns planning the meetings, following up on the meetings, uh, coordinating projects, activities. Most of our activities are either educational, networking, or academic. Um, and then some of our campaigns that are uh, building material to, uh, for healthcare professionals to use in their practice uh, of uh, medicine and, and the different other uh, the other different roles, um, and so communication is key. I think it works pretty well uh, because it is a volunteer-run organization. There are also challenges, and and I would actually ask uh, to the former interns and the well, Karina is the only one. Oh no, Jose Alberto is a former intern too. Uh, and uh, current interns, what are the most challenging things that interns face and have to deal with in this experience? Oh, just, this experience? Uh, just to quickly interrupt, that, that was one of the questions that someone asked, I just saw it, um, from Jocelyn Ocampo. For any of the interns, did you feel like there was a learning curve with spearheading projects, learning something you've never done before? And could you lean on other interns for help? Um, or were there any other points of contact? So kind of just going on like challenges, you know, something that you tried that was new as an intern. So great question, Jocelyn. Um, I'd like to take the first stab at this one. So um, with the learning curve and, and being supported by others. So there's definitely a learning curve. You know, I think what I really wanted to highlight when I was introducing myself was how transformative the experience is. So for me personally, it was a learning curve. I had never coordinated a, at a, an event that would have over 250 people, you know, but mind you, you're not alone. You're not alone. I had the support of Oscar, all the co-chairs, the president, the vice president. Um, you know, I know, I think Oscar has a different position now. You know, so I'm not too sure like how he's supporting interns, but like, He's, I know he would always, he's so supportive, he, he would be there. But like, just to describe to you what it was like for me planning the symposium, um, I basically had the all the leadership on speed dial. <laughs> like if I ever needed help, I would call Dr. Ortega or I would text her, I would text Oscar. It was, they're very open to helping you. You're not by yourself, you know, they're gonna make sure all your questions and concerns are answered. And like the reason why is because they also care about MOLA. They care about the outcomes. They care about the people that they're going to be helping. They care about you. 
um, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. There's a learning curve. Yeah. But like, it's so worth it. You're going to come out of the experience being able to tell anyone like, wow, I did this and this, and I connected with so-and-so and it's amazing. It's an amazing experience. Um, and in regards to what I was doing, I think someone asked also like how we were juggling our time when we were in the internship. Um, so at the time that I was doing MOLA, I was working, I believe, part-time, part-time as a research, uh, research assistant. And then I was promoted to research coordinator. And this all happened during the time of my MOLA um, experience as well. So I would basically work in the daytime at Northwestern, and then I do MOLA stuff in the evening. At the time that I was doing the internship, most of the meetings were around seven, six, because that's how the physician schedules worked out who were co-chairs. Um, but no, like, you know, the physician schedules vary. I'm not sure what's going on now, um, but that's how I worked it out. Um, I remember one time, actually, I, I always laugh when I think about it, when I think Oscar was doing a tour of the Northwestern space that was going to be the place where the symposium was going to be. And I was running, I think I was running receipts from for research participant payment to one of the finance buildings in Northwestern. And I happened to look up and I see Oscar, you know, like touring the space and we said hello to each other. So like the reason why I point to that is just because like it's flexible, you know, like after I was done with work, I was going to go meet Oscar at that space, you know, so there's you can flex your time around. I would like to answer a couple of your questions there, if you don't mind. Uh, the one, this is not an employment uh, experience. This is an education and, and practice experience that it's a formative experience for ideally for uh, youth, I would say youth, because it, it's not all, it's, there is not an age requir requirement, but um, it's a perfect fit for gap years when you are as our interns and former interns were explaining uh, trying to uh, build your your portfolio or your your curriculum with research projects, um, and you need you wanna do uh, demonstrate engagement with the community and through volunteer work, and also you wanna learn skills about things that you think that could be valuable for you in the future for your professional development. Networking is a key outcome here. You will meet, meet a lot of important people in your field. Um, and if you want to meet someone that is not currently part of the organization, we make the connections. Um, so for you, so that's what that. So it's not an employment opportunity, which means we don't sponsor visas. This is not an in-person uh, uh, twenty hours, as I said before. It's mostly virtual. Uh, you can have other uh, job uh, commitments. Uh, most of the meetings, if, if not all of them, are uh, uh, are after hours, after 5 p.m., like today, 5 p.m. Central Time. Uh, some of our meetings are at 7 a.m. Uh, some of our members and board uh, members might not be in the country, so uh, a couple of them are in, uh, one of them is in Europe and, and uh, uh, another one is in Puerto Rico, and uh, so we have members that are in other time zones. So we either have at 7 a.m. meetings or 5 p.m. meetings. Most of them are in the evening and the activities that we have also are most of them in the evening. Now, in terms of projects and everything that is logistical and you have to work on your own, it's your time. So you, you, you the 20 hours that we uh, in average request from you are very flexible um, and uh, that, that's usually not a problem. Uh, it could be overwhelming at times. If you have a full-time job and you have the, the, the MOLA, it could be overwhelming at times, but it's definitely not a constant. So it's very important communication, as I was saying. So any anticipation that is gonna be difficult for the intern to perform a duty or an assigned project, it's very important co to communicate that well. Uh, to, so we know we can prepare prep in anticipation and organize things so there is support. Uh, the guidance is by the experts in every field. Uh, so that's that's something that you will have the support of. And the requirements 
uh, you, we ideally have post, uh, um, uh, in, in the bachelor program is fine, but uh, we have had most of our, uh, our interns have been uh, already um, uh, graduates and pursuing their postgraduate work uh, or medical school. Um, but uh, so it's not open for high schoolers. It has to be a college education already. Uh, it's completely open for international medical graduates or international health graduates in any dis discipline. And the only condition is to be bilingual. Uh, a lot of our activities are conducted in Espanol, but all our business as a, a professional business is conducted in English. Va a tener ustedes, para aquellos de ustedes que no son expertos en español o que no tienen español como la primera lengua, esta es una oportunidad magnífica para mejorar su español uh, sin tener que comprometerse a hablar español todo el tiempo o a escribir en español. Uh, algunos de nosotros somos profesionales, ya éramos profesionales en nuestros países, entonces los graduados internacionales son absolutamente bienvenidos. Um, but all the business are conducted in English. Uh, it's, we have many members of our organization, Latin, Latinx like you, that are not uh, Spanish speakers. So we, we, that's why we conduct business in English. Most of the formalities of the organization have to be in English, uh, legal documents, etc. cetera. So it, it, that's why it's a requirement to be bilingual and comfortable writing and communicating in um, English. Do you have to have experience in doing this, this work? No, this is a learning, the learning experience. Um, you have to be ideally good at project management, task development and management, uh, and time management. Those are three conditions that for any professional at any level, even the students uh, will have to manage or to prove that they have a minimum level of proficiency with, so we can work with you and be um, rely on you for projects and, and and deadlines and, uh, and things that are relevant for the organization. I don't know if I answered all your questions, but those are the ones that I saw. Yes, thank you, Oscar, for that, um, yeah, that conversation. I just had, Karina, it's totally fine. If you have to hop off, no worries. Thank you for leaving your email. And I'll just email everyone with all of our emails as well, if both um, Jose and Jennifer, you feel comfortable. But yeah, Jose, I just had a quick question for you. Um, I know that you applied to medical school during your internship. So I was just wondering if you could tell the group, maybe some pre-meds in the group about that experience and how you were able to balance both applying um, to medical school and doing the internship and maybe how it even benefited your application. Actually, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. The it benefited my application because I mean, you're just in a zone practicing something that you really care about and how you envision, um, like I mentioned, practicing medicine. So you're, you're, you're living it, you're working on it. So that kind of translate on translates on your writing when you're uh, applying to medical school. In terms of time management, I mean, everybody's been uh, mentioning it, mentioning it for the most part. Um, it's your schedule and you can plan that however you want to, uh, besides the meetings, obviously, um, those have a set schedule. Um, you're, you're kind of, if you if you're good at working at night at 2 AM, 3 AM, sometimes I've caught Isa doing that. Um, then that's great for you. Um, but if you're a morning person, yeah, sure. You can do that as well. Um, it's really, uh, flexible. So, in terms of the time, like as long as you can manage your time, as long as you reach out to people, if you're getting too overwhelmed or you need like assistance on something, um, if you reach out, if you're transparent about it, um, it, it works itself out. I mean, we don't want to burn people out. That's like not the intention at all. It's more um, how can it's it, the first thought is how can we support you? Are you okay? Like, and the weekend, uh, though, we have weekly check ins. Um, well, might vary now, but uh, Thursdays when I was uh, the intern, um, and those check ins is a good time for you to like kind of say, like, oh, like this is my schedule for the week, or this is how my week's been, um, and kind of communicate uh, those things to plan out the week, basically, uh, with the, your fellow interns and Oscar Ivan to make sure that you're, you'll be able to meet all the, um, the tasks or 
um yeah, yeah you know what i'm saying so um yeah um I, I think if you're good at time management and you're 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 very transparent um that i think that's that 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 helps out um but i didn't think of it that way isa yeah for the application that definitely was in working uh at, at mola while applying i think it was very beneficial um uh, someone was asking uh also thank you Jose, uh that let's say that the preceptorship is not uh what you're looking for or is not ideal for you there are you you could be a member of the organization it's free for students whatever uh you're you're uh, in school for you can join mola as a member um only practicing professionals uh, we expect a fee for, for the registration and, and for the membership, but for students it's free. You will have also access to the scholarships and to apply for them, there is not a guarantee that you're gonna get it. Uh, and then um, you, if you decide to be a volunteer and not be with one particular program or um, as a non-for-profit that is democratically uh, run, you are invited to, any member is welcome to the board of directors meetings. Any member is welcome to express their interest to join any of the committees. Each one of those five programs has a committee um, and the, the members of those committees are volunteers. Uh, and uh, I think Rami was asking, you can join the international graduate committee uh, as a member of, of the organization, as a member of that committee. And that's a volunteer position. Um, you can bring your own projects. Another very important thing about Mola is that we are a lab. Uh, Isa said a lab in, in, uh, for leadership. It is a lab for other ideas that you have. Isa herself has very strong ideas about social justice and wellness. She's been able to, uh, in my view, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, to uh, implement those ideas in uh, the projects. Uh, be worried about having too many ideas because you're gonna have a lot of work too, right? but um, the ideas are welcome and uh, you will be a very intrinsic part of the analysis, the decision-making process and the execution of different projects, activities and ideas that might be your, your, the ideas that you uh, want to have a dream of developing. Um, we want to be enablers of, of those dreams um, for those of you that have very strong uh, uh, idea, ideas that you want to develop in research or whatever. So yeah. I, I hope I answer your question, Jimmy. Ro, uh, Romy, I'm sorry. I love I love the 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 Kelly Mesa's uh, avatar there. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Oscar. And everyone, I just posted the link. If you haven't, if you're not a member of MOLA, you're more than welcome to become a member. Like all, um, Oscar said, it's free for students. And just before I asked Jennifer um, a question, I just wanted to, I know someone asked about this to say, um, we do have, like Oscar said, three positions available. So the preceptorship program consists of, well, it used to consist of three interns. Now we're looking for four interns. We already have one. So we're looking for three. One that would be focused on communication. So things really into like MOLA website, MOLA social media, newsletter, communication, interacting, and kind of bringing all the committees together and advertising different events and even like creating flyers, communicating with um, our partners. So that's one position. And the other two would be, um, well, taking over Jennifer's role, which is public health and advocacy. So focusing on those two committees and then another intern to support uh, some of our other committees that I know Jose was in charge of. Um, so potentially like finances, Oscar, I'm not like fully sure about <laughs> that last position, uh, potentially like finances, uh, the medical student committee. I don't know what other committees you're in charge well, of. Well, and we have also the, the, the running an organization committee. So we have a communications committee, we have a finance committee, we have a development committee that Jose Alberto alluded to. And that's the one where we Right, right, we have a grand, right, grand writer. Uh, so work with the grand writer. Uh, Jose is passionate about that, and he's gonna write many in medical school, many grants 
you may be able to pay for the, your medical school that way <laughs> with, through <laughs> grant writing. So it's learning that, that's another committee. And then we have a governance committee that is not super active that might be uh, in need of re-engaging soon. Uh, so we have the, the programmatic committees and the functional committees that for, to run the organization, we distribute them and we try to make them match your interests. So um, for those of you that are savvy and interested in, in social media, um, and communications, institutional communications, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Um, and, and we need you. <laughs> and uh, if you have an interest in public health related things, we would do that. Um, so yeah, it, it, we, we will try to match your interest um, with this. And then uh, I believe the application is very simple. You just, uh, uh, after you, you uh, decide that this is something you wanna pursue, uh, you send uh, to the email address that is given somewhere. Um, so you send I, your, I, I, your I, I, curriculum and you send a letter of, of intent. So why is it that you want to be an intern? What makes you qualified to be an intern? And what you like uh, of being an intern? It doesn't have to be long, uh, but we want to see a sample of your writing um, as well as, as your CV. And with that, uh, we would call you for an interview. It's usually pretty competitive. Uh, and, and then uh, we choose, uh, you interview with executive committee. Uh, and then we choose uh, you and make you an offer. Uh, a, a, there's an educational agreement uh, based on which we set our, our goals and, and our um, expectations for each party. And then uh, there's a transitional period where you work with the current interns on transitioning all the work and the onboarding process. And then with experience starts. Uh, we have a lot of activities in June until October because we have the symposium that we organize during the summer. Yes, yeah, thank you, Oscar. And just, uh, yes, in terms of like where to send your information. So if you're interested in the communications portion of the internship, you're more than welcome to email me at programs at Chicago MOLA. This is also all over our social media, just in case you have a hard time finding it. I also pasted the link in the chat. So yes, just statement of interest. Also make sure to let us know you attended the open house. I think that shows us your interest. Um, like Oscar said, it's a pretty competitive position. So um, if you're interested, the more interested that you are, the more that makes us happy and, and willing to reach out to you as well. And then just three references and your resume. Um, and then I, well, for the communications, it would start in June. For the other two positions, um, sometime during the summer, we don't necessarily have like a start date, but send in everything ASAP. We do have, we have been getting a lot of applications. So just keep that in mind. And we reach out um, whenever we like get the, the application. So yeah, any questions about applying or the requirements? or any questions for our wonderful interns that were able to join us today? All right, well, it is 5.55. Um, so I just want to be mindful of everyone's time, but thank you so much everyone for joining us. I will be sending out a follow-up email with the link to this recording. So if you like miss something or if you wanna send it to a friend who you know would be qualified or interested in this position, feel free to do so, um, potentially a survey and everyone's contact information. So Oscar, myself, Jose, Jennifer and Karina, in case you have any questions and then just links to our social media and of course links to becoming a member and thank you so much. You're also more than welcome to reach out to me. Again, I'll paste it. I'll put my email in the chat um, in case you have any questions. Thank you, Jose. Yes, reach out to me in case you have any questions or any comments or something. And yeah, we hope to see everyone's application soon. We're really excited. And yes, hopefully we'll be welcoming you to our MOLA family. Thank you, Isa. I can stay a little longer if anyone wants to have a, 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 a little more, uh, if, if, if anyone wants to stay a little longer, I, I'll be happy to answer any questions. This, it's been awfully quiet. <laughs> but you, you've been asking questions in the chat. Hey, Silvia.
Hi, Ola. Um, thank you so much for going over all of the, the, the you know, the, the of Mola's background and it's, it's amazing work that you guys do. I just wanted to hear a little bit more about maybe specific projects that the committees are working on, um, mm -hmm. just to see what, what it's a little bit more like. If you could yeah. talk a little bit more about that, that would be great. Thank you. Absolutely. So um, let's say uh, Jennifer may, uh, alluded to Mola Se Vacuna campaign. So Mola Se Vacuna campaign is Oh, Oscar, do you want to let Jennifer talk about it? Yeah, talk about it. Hi, yeah, so there are a couple things. So yeah, the Mores de Vacuna campaign has been one of the most um, recent projects that we've been doing. So the point of that was to basically show the Latino community that we Latinos are getting the, the COVID-19 vaccine. So we had... Um, Issa so wonderfully assisted with this where we would like send pictures of us getting vaccinated and she would post them on our side be like hey look at this we're all don't be scared. The other thing we did which was what my committee so both of my committees public health and advocacy they worked together to create like an event so we had um, an infectious disease doctor uh, we had Dr. Luna so something if you watch like um, what is she on Univision is she yeah, if you ever go like on the news, like the Hispanic news, like she'll always come because she's like the, she works for the city of Chicago now. Mm -hmm. So she's like super in charge of like vaccine distribution and like letting people know what the current updates on the COVID-19. And we also had um, Lourdes, uh, Dr. Lourdes and Johnny, and they would basically discuss like, okay, what's the vaccine? Like, and they would talk about the myths of it, why you shouldn't be scared of it. So we were trying to basically not necessarily completely reach out to the community, but also give tools to other professionals who want to provide it to their patients or provide it to their clinics, or maybe use it as a news clip, essentially to show that these vaccines is something that we want Latinos to go get to not be scared of. So that's one of the most recent projects that we've been doing. Um, another project that advocacy is also working on is giving the, like creating another event for, um, giving uh, Latino doctors or healthcare professionals the tools to assist patients who are either underinsured or not insured because that is a big problem. So that is another thing we're working on as well. So some projects do come from what the committee members or the co-chairs want. Sometimes you can even go in and say, hey, this is something I'm interested in. This is something that I want to do. So it's pretty active. And the, these projects can go like from zero to hundred real fast. So. You got to be on your toes a little bit, but yeah, those are the most recent projects that we're doing. Yeah, thank you, Jennifer. And on our social media, if you just want to follow us um, or just check out our page at Chicago Mola on Instagram, we highlight kind of the different events that we have. And of course, behind each of these events is an intern. So Cafecitos, part of our wellness committee, basically just talking about mental health, burnout among medical staff and doctors, physicians, students. So really focusing on that as part of the wellness committee communications, just basically all of social media. That's one project. Um, MOLA opportunities. So talking about like different opportunities available within MOLA and especially in the education and research committee, highlighting the Michael Reese Scholarship Foundation. That's something really big. So like going through applications, working with Dr. Ortega, who is a committee co-chair of that committee. Um, yeah, and then, well, at least for communication, since that's what I do, working on videos, that's a new passion project that I had at the beginning of the year, um, and it turned out really well, and I learned how to edit videos and really just add a lot more content to our YouTube channel and our website, um, so different projects like that. I know, I don't know if the picture is here, but I did have one, something that I was really passionate about at the beginning of COVID was just um, interacting with the Latinx community and handing out like masks, letting them know how to like wash their hands in Spanish um, and how to wear a mask. Cause I know that there was a lot of misinformation about that. So I basically just talked to Oscar and then other members of MOLA and we volunteered with Esperanza Community Health Clinic in, I forgot what the location was. I think it was like near it wasn't near Bronzeville, but Brighton Park. Brighton Park, yes. And we basically just like handed out little care packages of hand sanitizer, face masks, and little cards that like taught members how to put on a mask and how to wash their hands. And it was all bilingual, so in Spanish and English. Um, so that was something really cool that we did. And it was just like a very random. <laughs> a 
<laughs> I live right next to the hospital, but it was just a very random project. And I'm trying to find a picture. Um, very random project, but of course, in line with MOLA's um, mission of advocating for our community, community and just really being there for, for our members, both people interested in the medical field and members of our community through public health and advocacy. Um, yeah, so that was something very cool that, that we did. So one of the projects, so it's both projects within the committee. So working with other members and talking to them about kind of like what the next step will be for that committee. And then also your own projects. If you're, if that's something that you're interested in, or if you come across something that you think is cool, like an op-ed topic, reaching out to other members to see if they're interested in participating. I think the picture you're talking about, I think you actually had it in your presentation because everybody was like, wearing masks. I, had like a little Esperanza tarp on top. I know I just can't find it that's weird that I don't have it on Instagram but yeah great question thank you <laughs> any other questions all right great well I hope to see everyone's application submit your materials ASAP and yeah we're excited that you were all able to join us today that says a lot about each and every one of you so thank you so much thank you thank you everybody